Hello, I'm Ann Simpson. And I'm Justin Atkins, and thanks for joining us. Well, recently, Woodbury Mayor Mary Giuliani Stevens met with business leaders to talk about the state of the local business community. Today, what we want to do is take an opportunity to look back over 2017, see what's happened um, here in the city and in our business community, look ahead a little uh, to what we need to plan for. Currently, we have two goals in our plan. It's to promote Woodbury as a community of choice. And the second goal is to maximize our development potential. So back in the, I want to say 2006, 2007, there was some pressure from, for some development around the hospital. And so the city decided to do a study to see what the potential was on medically related businesses. Woodbury sure is a medically sophisticated community. I'm just going to list a few of these medically related healthcare companies that are here. Children's Hospital and Clinics. Central Pediatrics, Minnesota Gastroenterology just signed a lease for the new building that's going at City Place, and they'll be occupying that. And currently today, I think we're over 200 medically related businesses. The mayor will give her State of the City address to the public on February 24th at Central Park. The Healthy Sports Center in Woodbury will become a winter wonderland on December 1st. The city will be holding the annual event, which will include a coin carnival this year. Along with free ice skating and the outdoor rink, there will be carnival games, a tree lighting ceremony, and seasonal music to welcome winter. The fun starts at 6 p.m. and all are welcome. Well, from our experience working in South Washington County, many public safety officials get a little camera shy. On the other hand, Woodbury firefighter medic Kevin Lynch has a bit of a different approach to on-camera work. Mornings for full-time firefighter Kevin Lynch are pretty much the same as every other day. Typical full day for me usually starts out with coming in, um, checking out the trucks, just make sure those are ready to go for the day, make sure all of our equipment is stocked and ready to go. These may seem like menial tasks, but they're critical for everyday operations in the city. Let's do that again, huh? Take two. Besides these basic practices, full-time officers are expected to help in other ways around the department as well. Kevin's passion is education. I'm also heavily involved in training, both for fire and EMS side of the house. Um, we have monthly trainings um, that we have to attend to keep our skills and certifications up. And, and I always really enjoyed that and that mentorship role. Experience from Kevin's early days as a firefighter inspire him to do more for the new recruits of the public safety department. I remember what it's like to be that new guy and my first ride along, um, not here at Woodbury, but with another department while I was in school, I showed up, shook all their hands, they introduced themselves and said, hey, go sit in this corner and we'll get you if a call comes in. And to me, I didn't feel that that was very valuable as a person who was trying to come in and learn the business and learn the job. From that moment on, Kevin made a commitment to himself to do things differently. I said that I don't think that I want anybody else to ever have that same experience, um, feeling like they walked away from a, a learning opportunity with nothing. As a graduate of Brown College, Kevin had experience in videography. Quickly, those skills became a natural extension of his personal mission. Having that creative side to me, they wanted me to take a camera, shoot some stuff, and then be able to put it out for training of, say, a new product that would come in. Word began to spread about his abilities. Brian, you're good. You can go ahead. And well, one of my coworkers here was speaking with somebody at Regions Hospital, one of the doctors there who was kind of running a studio there. All right, ladies, we're set. The coworker passed his information along to Dr. Bjorn Peterson. He approached me and said, I want to get our online education and video production skills. I want to, I want to take them to another level. And from there, Hi, I'm Dr. Bjorn Peterson with Regions Hospital EMS, and thanks for watching this month's Regions EMS update. A show was born. So Carrie, take it away. The monthly program targets EMS professionals employed at Regions and other clinics owned by health partners. On the show, emergency doctors interview medical pros to inform viewers about everything from healthcare trends to field medicine. It's kind of a way for me to take that love of education, um, although I'm not teaching them myself, it's kind of a way for me to reach a little bit further beyond, you know, my teaching just here in Woodbury. Kevin says there's more than one parallel between his work as a firefighter and a camera operator. Taking the time to invest in the little details, to get the shot right, to set everything up, make sure everybody's mic'd, um, framed right, the composition of it. Firefighting is the same way. I mean, it's a lot of setup. It's a lot of training that goes into all that. It's the little fine details that make you better in the end. 
Kevin's monthly education program is used by EMS staff across the Twin Cities. You can find some of Kevin's work by searching Regions EMS on YouTube. Well, Cottage Grove resident Ernest Gilman was named Artist of the Month for November by the Arts Commission. Gilman has experience in architectural drafting and black and white photography, but he prefers using pencil on paper and working in the realism style. Two years ago, he began his Americana Blue Collar series that tells stories about ordinary people that aim to be both contemporary and timeless. His latest projects involve experimenting with colored and graphite pencil. And speaking of the Cottage Grove Arts Commission, they will be hosting a paint and sip party on January 12th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the River Oaks Event Center. The cost to attend is $30 per person, which includes all painting materials. The event will be instructed by Lisa Bell of Atlas Traveling Art. Food and drink will be available through the Eagles Bar and Grill. Free family-friendly musical entertainment is planned this fall and winter at Woodbury Central Park Amphitheater. A variety of musical acts will perform on Sunday afternoons and Thursday evenings, including the Roseville Big Swing Band and holiday concerts. Well, the City of Woodbury wants you to know your city code. Hi, I'm Matt Novak, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of Woodbury. Following our city code helps maintain property values and shows that you take pride in our community. Today I'm here to speak to you about waste and recycling containers. Waste and recycling container complaints are one of our most common complaints. So what are you supposed to do with them? Except for the day of pickup, waste and recycling containers are supposed to be located indoors or be fully hidden from view. What we would accept as fully hidden from view is located behind a solid fence or wall no less than five feet in height, so as not to be visible from adjoining properties. You might ask, are there any exceptions to this rule? There is one exception. You are allowed to place your containers out at the curb after 6 p.m. the night before pickup. Be sure to keep them on your side of the curb and not in the street. Please be sure to follow Woodbury's community standards and remember, a well-maintained property is an asset to the neighborhood and community. For a list of common code violations, visit woodburymn.gov backslash know the code. Recently, the Woodbury Public Safety Department hosted a CPR class in connection with Tamarack Thrivent Financial. The course taught residents hands-only CPR skills for adults. Officers from the department demonstrated the best techniques for this life-saving method. Additionally, Thrivent Financial donated two AED devices to be used in Woodbury squad cars on patients experiencing a cardiac arrest. Craft show seekers might want to put December 2nd on their calendar for the homemade holiday sip and shop event at the River Oaks Event Center in Cottage Grove. You can do your holiday shopping with crafters and vendors all in one spot. Sip a beverage while you shop or take a break and sit in the Eagles Bar and Grill and spend time visiting with your fellow shoppers. The R.H. Stafford Library in Woodbury will be holding a discussion on how to collect vintage Barbie dolls on December 13th. You can learn about the history and how to identify Barbie dolls and other Mattel licensed products. You must register with the library. On December 7th, you can paint your own holiday cards at the Park Grove Library. This 90-minute workshop will provide several ideas for creating your own unique and personalized cards. Contact Park Grove to register. Now here's a quick look at some upcoming meetings you might want to attend. And with that, we wrap up another edition of Weekly Wire. If you missed an episode or would like to watch this one again, go online to swctc.org. Click on the Watch Programming button found on the lower portion of the homepage, then select Weekly Wire. And of course, you can always stay up to date with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And Justin, before we go, we just want to mention that we also have a new YouTube channel. That's right, so you can subscribe to that and get episodes of Weekly Wire as they come out, as well as some of our other videos. That's right, we actually operate several YouTube channels for our individual cities, Cottage Grove, Woodbury, St. Park, Newport, and then right. now we also have an SWCTC one for shows that kind of encompass everything like Weekly Wire. That's right, so make sure to check that out. Yeah, have a great week.